Hey guys, it's Michelle from Cozy Egg. I am recording today. It is Thursday. See, I had to look at my notes already. Thursday, July 21st, 2016. Uh, this is episode 14 of the podcast or Floss Tube, whichever you prefer. Um, so this is episode 14. And um, thank you for joining if this is your first time. Uh, thanks so much for checking me out. I appreciate it. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much again for coming back. Um, I know that there are a ton, ton of um, floss tubes and podcasts and what have you out there. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to come and see what I'm up to. So um, again, I'm Michelle and I also have a, a blog, Cozy Egg, um, which uh, I'll talk about a little bit more here in a minute, but you can find my blog at cozyegg.cozyeggdesigns.com. Um, you can also go directly to cozyeggdesigns.com and from there you can get to either my crafting blog, which is my Cozy Egg blog, or you can get to my Cozy Style blog, which is more of a lifestyle, um, you know, books and nail polish and all of that other good stuff. So um, if you're interested in that, go check that out. Um, so anyway, and you can also find me on, obviously on YouTube um, as Cozy Egg. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, all of the places as Cozy Egg. So um, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. And if you um, like the, the podcast, the floss tube, the video, uh, I love comments and I uh, would love it if you, you know, give it a thumbs up if you like it. And um, of course, I always appreciate subscribers. So thanks so much for joining. So we'll jump right into it. So um, amazingly, I am coming to you like just a couple weeks after my last uh, recording. So <laughs> hopefully I can stay on track with this. Um, it is it is July in Texas, let me tell you. So I'm a little bit shiny <laughs> today. Um, I do have some hopefully better light, um, but yeah, so it's like a hundred and something degrees out <laughs> and wow. Anyway, um, so two weeks after my last, uh, my last video, so I don't have any finishes to share. Um, I have done a little bit of uh, stitching, but not much else. So no finishes this week. So let's just get right into the works in progress and I'll let you know kind of how I'm doing on that. So um, obviously, uh, last time I talked extensively about my anniversaries of the heart and I have also um, I may have mentioned at the time so I had also posted a blog post that kind of showed some of my the last few blocks that I had finished and you know had some uh, some better pictures of those so if you're interested you can go check that out on the blog um, so this is in my um, my stitching uh, bag that my friend Sylvia made for me. Um, it's got this beautiful, you know, perfect for July fabric on there. This is out of um, that screening uh, that you can get, uh, which is a perfect thing, unless of course you're carrying coffee. Um, and then it's got this great little horn book, um, miniature horn book with an M on it for Michelle. Um, so here's where I'm at. I was working on the uh, the Swan Lake block, and um, this probably does not look very different at all from the last time you saw it. Um, but I'm moving along. Um, I honestly I had been working on this and working on this, uh, and as you know, ran into the coffee incident, and. Probably right around the time that I recorded last, um, I don't know what it was, but something, you know, just kind of was getting into my head that I was getting a little bit burnt out on this. 
even though this block is the one I've mentioned in the last um, video that this block is the one that I was I've been kind of anxious to get to because the coloring is so different on it and it's got these beautiful charcoal grays and everything in it so um, I was getting a little burnt out on it which is why it doesn't have a whole lot of progress um, and but just in case you're not familiar this is what that specific block looks like um, it's called Swan Lake this is Blackbird Designs it's the seventh pattern in their anniversaries of the heart series that they did a few years ago I don't even know how many years ago this was I want to say this was like oh good lord it's 2010 <laughs> anyway so uh, Swan Lake that's what that block is gonna look like and then um, and I am actually stitching all of the blocks on um, on one piece of fabric so they're all together including the two bonus blocks and so um, anyway so that's block seven so it's the July block so I'm working on that um, and I'm stitching it on 40 count uh, vintage exemplar uh, lakeside linen and uh, one thread over two and I'm using the called for um, over dyed cotton so it's a mix of weeks and gentle arts and um, what are they calling themselves now classic color works crescent colors whatever um, so it's a mix of kind of all three of those so, um, like I said, not a whole lot of difference since the last time, um, since the last time I worked on this. Oh my gosh, there's a little, so I'm like facing my front windows and I have the blinds open so that I could hopefully get some better light in here. And there are two little bunny rabbits that are playing chase or something across my lawn and my cats are like right up against the windows <laughs> so if you hear some loud like thumping here in a minute yeah they're entertained for the moment so anyway um so anniversary to the heart and i i think i mentioned last time and i probably mentioned it uh, i talked about it obviously a few episodes ago my plan for this year was I really wanted to focus on getting some of my works in progress finished because I have a, a shameless amount of works in progress that are sitting in my closet and not getting attention have not been getting love for a long time some of them um, and so I really wanted to focus on things and try to knock some of these out this year because you know, I want to have them on my walls or want to be able to, you know, love and appreciate them. Um, which is why I started stitching them in the first place, right? So, um, what I did at, at the end of 2015 was I chose nine projects and um, they were all works in progress. And they were things that I was actually interested in working on. So obviously there's a lot of things on that list of works in progress that I was not overly interested in working on them. Otherwise I would be working on them, right? So um, I tried to pick a mix of big pieces and kind of smaller to medium pieces. And then for my 10th piece, I made it basically a seasonal freebie kind of you know uh, choice and I printed them out on strips of paper you know put them in a little box and so on January 1st I normally have a New Year's Day start on January 1st so I typically start something new but what I decided to do was I would on January 1st that morning I would pick you know the first one out of the box and that would be what I would work on and I would focus on that that would be my focus piece until it was finished and then I would choose the next thing out of the box so um, the first thing that came out of the box was my hairpins and I showed you that you know a few um, a few episodes ago uh, and all that was left on that was just some finishing so boom done I think I got that done in like a couple of weeks 
And then the next thing that came out of the box was my anniversary with heart. So I've been, that's been my focus piece basically and since the middle of January. And um, I was starting to get a little burnt out on it. Now, of course, I've allowed myself, you know, to work on smalls or ornaments or, you know, whatever I want kind of here and there so that if I needed a travel project or if I, you know, needed something, a small finish to spur me on, I could do that. So, um, but I have basically since the middle of January worked on nothing but anniversaries of the heart. So, um, I'm getting a little burnt out on it. I'm not going to lie. So, um, what started coming into my head was, um, I had been, you know, looking on, uh, looking at some other stitchers, uh, works on, in the Facebook group for Chatelaine Designs. I'm a huge Chatelaine Designs fan. Um, I've only stitched and finished one of them. Um, and that was like back in 2006. Um, or 2005, actually, I finished it end of 2005 um I have several I have several started anyway so I was you know lurking looking at pretty pictures whatever and got it into my head that I really 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 wanted to work on um my mystery nine which she's probably on like mystery 45 now or something that's how long ago this has been um mystery nine was her her um, 12 month mystery for 2006. And so, you know, I did my first Chatelaine was my, was the MIDI mystery one, which was a six month mystery. Uh, it was the first one that she did uh, that was a six month. And that was in 2005. So it was like June through December, 2005. And I kept up with it and stitched it and finished it. Love it, it's framed. One of these days I'll have to show it to you. Um, and so then January 1st, 2006, I started Mystery 9, which is um, also the King's Vegetable Garden or Le Potager de Roy. Roy. Ouais. Obviously I'm not French. Anyway, that's my French Texan. Um, <laughs> the King's Vegetable Garden. So, started that in 2006. I got married in April of 2006 and um, also uh, moved in March of 2006. Um, I moved from my apartment into our house and um, so I was basically the beginning of 2006, I was in the process of moving. We were moving, you know, our two places into our house and um, getting ready to get married. So, needless to say, Mystery 9 <coughs> did not get a whole lot of attention and I've worked on it here and there over the years, whatever, but it has been one of those things that has like been on my list. I want it done, I want it done, I want it done um, because I indeed love it and really want it finished um, because it's beautiful. <coughs> so anyway, I decided I'm going to pick this thing up and I'm just going to work on it. So I gave myself free reign to, you know, take a break from Anniversaries of the Heart and work on Mystery 9 for a little bit. Mystery 9 is actually one of the other nine projects that's in my box. So Maybe I'll actually pull it out here at some point. But, so I wanted to show you where I'm at. So, this is in a 17 inch Q-snap. This is like the biggest Q-snap that I have. And I'll be honest with you, 17 inch square Q-snap gets a little unwieldy. Um, It's probably a good thing that they don't make a bigger Q-snap because I would be trying to stitch in it. So, um, let me see if I can show you this a little bit closer. 
um, so you can see some of the prettiness. Um, and so the other thing too here is when I did um, my midi mystery, I had it on scroll rods and I decided to do all of the stitching, you know, each month, each part, I would do the stitching and then at the end, I would do all of the beading. And that's what I did for Mr. for Midi Mystery 1, which is the medieval herb garden. So that's what I did with that one and that was fine, but it was a whole lot of beading at the end. So this one, as Martina is wont to do, you know, she says, ooh, sparkly, there's going to be so many beads and crystals and, uh, you know, all the good stuff. So I thought, I'm going to bead this as I go. I don't know that that was the best choice. Time will tell. But, um, so I am beading as I go. Now, let me show you. And you could probably see some of the sparkly from those Delica beads. Um, so this has beading here. You can see some of that. There's some beading here. Let me go a little bit closer and see if you can see that. Yeah. Um, the center portion is actually going to be filled in. Um, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, but this right here, this little stair step jig jog deal here, this is actually going to have bugle beads in it. And bugle beads, the way that they are made is, you know, it's basically a long tube and they cut it. And so those edges are sharp. And over time, if there's a lot of movement on them, they can cut your thread. So. I opted to leave the bugle beads off until the very end. I'm also not putting the larger crystals on as I go because they are larger. Your thread, you know, tends to get caught on them. So I'm only putting the delicate beads on at the moment. The crystals and the bugle beads will come later. So anyway, um, but here's my dilemma. So because I am beading as I go, I obviously cannot put this in a hoop. <coughs> I cannot, you know, put it in a smaller Q-snap that's going to go over those beads. So at this point, obviously I've almost outgrown my Q-snap and I still have a ways to go, you know, this outside stuff. So um, you can see I've still got a good bit of fabric here. Um, I'm am probably going to try to put this on a scroll frame with some batting uh, to cushion the beads and see if that works for me. We'll see. I haven't gotten there yet, so. But, um, so I picked this up the other day, and when I picked it up, I had all of these scrolly things in the corners done um, for two corners were totally complete and then I had half of a third corner done. So I got the the other half of the third corner done and then I got these other two um, done in the fourth corner and then I have started the beading and so let's see let me get over here. So you can see where I've started beading that and this part is intense with the beading. There's so much beading in this part and this is where I'm like, maybe this was not a great idea because you know, here I am, I'm excited, I'm going to work on something else and then it's like, mm, now I have to do all this freaking beading. But I actually love beading. But I was, I think I was kind of hoping that I could like, you know, get some big wins and do something different. But we've actually been watching the Tudors. Um, we had never watched it when it was originally on. So 
it's it's almost kind of fitting I mean, obviously this is French and that is English um, but you know with all of the glitz and glam of uh, royalty this is kind of perfect for that so and you see my little crown needle minder there you can see my big long beading needle that I've got on there um, and so if you are new to shadowing designs or if you have thought about stitching them but been afraid to do them um, don't be afraid I was super afraid before I started one which is why I started with a midi um, Martina is amazing at at what she does at her designing because and here's why this is why I think this look at the texture sorry I'm like a drunken sailor with this uh, <laughs> look at the texture so this is pearl cotton or pearl silk sorry and so it's a thicker thread and you can see the texture that it gives you here and then like with this herringbone stitch which is also in the pearl um, the silk pearl you get all of that texture she has you back stitch in some places, but not in all the places. She's got, you know, metallic threads. These are actually half stitches in metallics in that um, petite treasure braid. So it just gives you that little bit, you know, that little subtle shimmer. And then she's got these beads. You know, here you've got these beautiful road stitches you know, these artichoke beds, you know, look at the, you know, at the flowers on those artichokes. I mean, it's just, it, 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 it truly is stunning. Um, the different specialty stitches that she has you do and um, the way that she incorporates specialty stitches with beads, with different kinds of threads. I mean, it's, she's really I think a master at what she does but everything comes with very clear directions clear um, diagrams you know and plus you have like this whole you know slew of stitchers that are well versed in stitching chatelaines that can answer questions and help and you know what have you so don't be afraid to do it um, they're well worth the effort. They really are. Um, and with beading too, that's the other thing. If you have not ever beaded before on a piece, um, the way that I was taught to do it, and you know, the stitching police are not going to come to your house, but the way that I was taught to do it is you are still, I am using a thread and I will show you what I'm using. I'm not using beading thread. Um, I'm actually using DMC and um, I am using a DMC that matches the color of my fabric which it is hard to tell but this fabric is actually called lavender mist it's 32 count Zweigart lavender mist um, so it has it's very pale lavender so I'm using DMC one strand of thread but when I um, when I'm attaching my beads, I'm still making an X, like I'm doing a cross stitch in the same direction that I'm doing it. And what I'm doing is for that first leg that comes over, I'm going through my bead one way. For the second leg that comes over, I'm going through the bead the other way. And you can see all of my beads sit in the same direction. So um, it keeps them secure and it keeps them looking, you know, nice and they're all facing the same way, just like you want your stitches to face the same way. Um, so that's how I do my beads. I do the same thing with the crystals as I go through them at least twice, depending on the size of the crystal, um, just to make sure that you know those suckers are on there good <laughs> so um so that's what I have been working on and you know 
uh, I wanted to just kind of, since I haven't shown this project before, I thought I would just take a minute. This is, um, I printed, this is a, just a color printout of a photo that somebody, of someone's finished um, Mystery 9 at the time that, you know, in 2006 or around about. Um, and so this is what the whole thing is going to look like. So you can see I'm only out to here with these little swirly bits. And so the next part I have to do are these little pawns. Um, and then I'll go back in. She has you go back in and then do these little trees or shrubberies, whatever. And then you do these little urns. So I'm on, what part am I on? seven or eight yeah seven or eight something like that um so very clear directions um and uh the you know the her charts her downloadable charts uh you can usually she usually does them in black and white and in color i find that it's much easier to read them in color um than to do it on a black and white chart. It's a little easier to see, you know, where everything's going. Um, and then, and I bought the kit for this from European Cross Stitch, which is typically where everybody, you know, purchases their Chatelaine design kits. This is their card. I don't know, I believe this information is still correct, but you, would, you could probably Google it and find out. Um, but they kit everything up beautifully when it comes to you. It's, you know, gorgeous. They already have everything in these floss away bags. Um, and it's all of these, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous silks. And it's, Martini uses a, a mix of silk and colors, Gloriana, um, Karen watercolors, NPI, uh, you know, you name it. And then there's all of the different treasure braids, which are the metallics, excuse the um, buffalo on the table. Um, so yeah, such pretty, pretty colors. And, um, and then it also came with, uh, I also got the, the beads obviously for it and um they come in these these little containers they're all marked and labeled exactly what they are so that there's no question they even included uh, this little ribbon uh, that had a, a beading needle and a, a needle for um, you know your tapestry needle to stitch with i must have just pulled out you know something from another project and use that but um all of your crystals and delicas and there's those little bugle beads that are going to go in that one section um the swarovski crystals you can see there's cubes in here and these little bicones um so pretty but they really they really do a beautiful a beautiful presentation um when you buy a kit from them. And so in the center, so I mentioned um, that center portion. So uh, typically, you know, sometimes what Martina will do is she will, she will build a mystery, you know, and give you all of the parts except for the center part. And you usually get that center part last because it's usually kind of, you know, that surprise little bit in the mid, in the middle. And, um, they are often heavily beaded or, you know, have some kind of special something in the middle there. So for this one, she actually offered a couple of options. So she designed a stitched center um, that, you know, a, a lot of stitchers chose to do. But then she also offered um, a beaded center. And so what she offered, uh, and she actually sold these herself, so we purchased these directly from her, is it was this beautiful crystal that has a sun face in it for the Sun King. 
obviously. And um, this beautiful crystal. And then the, I'm not gonna take them out because I'll drop them over the castle even. And um, these beautiful Baroque pearls. And they are um, this beautiful kind of sagey green. And then there are some uh, pale pink ones. There's four pale, pale pink ones. Um, it, Martina has the most amazing, you know, kind of pearl and uh, bead collection herself. So it was fun uh, to get these. And uh, I'm, I think what I'm going to do for mine is going to be kind of a, a mixture of the two. Uh, I'm going to stitch a portion of the center and then um, and then put these in that center spot. But I want it to have some, you know, some stitching underneath it and in the surround around it. So anyway, so that's what I've been working on. This is, you can see how old this project bag is because, or you can see how old this project is because it is in one of these fancy, fancy stitching bags um, that uh, I believe I purchased at the container store. So it's basically like a, a mesh bag, you know, a mesh zippered bag. Um, these actually work great. They're just not, you know, they're not super fun, but they're relatively cheap. Um, I found that they were much cheaper than uh, buying, you know, at the time, a lot of the stitching shops had, you know, those plastic zippered um, project bags. I did not like the plastic um, bags. One, because I, I just didn't want to put like my silks in a, you know, in a plastic bag. That's just me. But um, also, uh, they didn't seem to hold up super well. A lot of them, you know, over time, that plastic would rip. And so I actually went to the container store and found these, and these were perfect. I think I bought, you know, three or four of them. Um, and they had them in like gray and black and white. So anyway, um, if you're in need of something like this, go to the container store. So, um, so that's actually what I have been working on. You know, it was kind of like, I'm just going to work on it this one weekend. I'm just going to work on it until I finish this fourth corner. I'm just going to go ahead and start beating. So whatever. I'm enjoying it. I'm just gonna work on it until, you know, I decide to go back to an Anniversaries of the Heart. But I, I'm loving stitching on it. So it's making me very happy. And then the only other thing that I have been working on, um, and like I said, this is gonna be all stitching all the time today because I have no knitting, I have no quilting, all I got stitching. So um, I, this I actually picked up today um, and worked on a little bit at lunch because I needed a little travel project. I actually went into the office today. Um, this is in another stitching wallet that was made by my friend Sylvia. Uh, it has shoes and hats and very, you know, um, fun little black and white bag. There's the inside fabric. Um, and so this is... Um, I've actually got this in a hoop and let me see if I can white behind it's probably not going to help a whole lot because it's black but um, this is Colonial Garden by Plum Street Samplers and she designed this so that you could stitch it on black or on white so dark background light background uh, both both of the different charts were included in uh, in the chart itself and I just love this and every year I try to stitch something for Eric for Valentine's Day this was actually supposed to be his Valentine's Day gift like last year um, this is 40 count 
black forest linen. I want to say it's weeks black forest. I could be wrong. It could be lakeside. Anyway, this is the tightest, tightest 40 count weave I've ever worked on in my entire life. And I don't have a problem stitching on black. I don't have a problem stitching on 40 count. I do it all the time. That, like everything I do is 40 count primarily. This 32 count Chatelaine design is like, whoa. But this 40 count Black Forest, this is the tightest fabric I've ever seen. I mean, I don't know if it was just the dye process or what, but holy moly which is why I have it on a hoop. I had actually started out just stitching this in hand um, and I could not for the life of me see the holes. And good light wasn't helping. You know, my cheaters were not helping. Nothing was helping. And so um, Jean from the attic had actually um, suggested when I was working on my Snooty Parrots um, project, which is on the uneven weave the 5260 count um, she had actually suggested putting that in a hoop because it does open those holes up a little bit which makes it a little bit easier to see and so I thought uh, I'm gonna try it on this 40 count and it and that that's the entire reason that this has languished is because what should have been a very you know quick stitch um, turned into this whole, oh my God, I can't even see this thing. So, um, so I couldn't work on it at night. I couldn't work on it, you know, if I didn't have fabulous light, blah, blah, blah. So, um, anyway, uh, please excuse us. Anyway, um, but it's got these beautiful, I'm stitching this with NPI uh, silks that it calls for. And uh, it, they're in these beautiful, beautiful, you know, kind of autumn colors, as you saw. Um, but stitching, using the hoop actually, I think did help quite a bit. So hopefully I can now make some progress on that. But it's a good little um, travel project to have. Uh, that doesn't require me taking, you know, my gigantic cues now everywhere. So anyway, so those are the whips that I've been working on. Um, and so we'll see which way the wind blows and what I work on, you know, for the next two weeks. But like I said, my intention is I'm probably going to keep working on uh, Mystery 9 and working on that beading to see if I can make some progress. I may decide after I finish that one corner beating that I go back to Anniversaries of the Heart. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's all a guess at this point. So, talked about, let's see, we talked about Anniversaries of the Heart. I talked about my Mystery Nine. Um, and uh, I talked about my Colonial Garden. So, um, stash enhancement, you know, I, I have not, like I said last time, I've not been buying that much. Um, I really couldn't tell you the last time I had stash enhancement for the most part, um, stitching stash enhancement for sure. Um, I actually stopped and, uh, today while I was over in that neighborhood, I went to my a local needle workshop that is over by my office and picked up this one lone thread. I, this is my stash haul, one thread. But this is a Classic Colorworks Magnolia Blossom. I needed this thread um, for Anniversary of the Heart. Um, this is actually the color that the swans are stitched in. Um, and I did not have this in my stash, so I had to go pick this up. And luckily they have it. So, um, that's it for stash enhancement. <laughs> Aren't you glad you stuck around? Anyway, um, the other, 
I had a couple other things that I wanted to chat about. Um, I'm getting to like the 40 minute mark, so I don't want to spend too much time um, on it uh, because I know you guys have places to go and things to do and stitching and what have you. But um, I've, I have been watching, um, you know, a bunch of floss tube videos, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Um, and I wanted to give a couple of shout outs to the folks that I've been watching. Um, Abby from uh, Bella Stitch, I've been watching hers. I kind of binge watched all of her videos. Um, and that has been a lot of fun uh, watching, you know, what she's been working on and everything. And um, she's got some beautiful pieces that she's uh, been working on. Uh, of course, uh, one of the things she's been working on is uh, Hawk Run Hollow. I don't know if it's houses or I think it's houses, not village. I think it's houses. Um, of course, I have one that's already started in the closet. Um, it may be on my list of nine. I don't think it is, but anyway. Um, so I've been watching her videos and um, I started watching uh, Vana the Twisted Stitcher. Um, I've you know, known Vana for a long time. Uh, and it's funny, I was watching her video. Uh, it may have been her first video. Um, and, you know, she mentioned that she had been blogging for 10 years. And uh, funny enough, that reminded me, I have also been blogging for 10 years. I actually started my blog um, in, I think, June of 2006. So, you know, 2006 was a big year. I, you know, moved, I got married, I started uh, my first big chatelaine and then abandoned it. I started a blog. <laughs> so, yeah, so I have been blogging for 10 years, which I can't even believe. But anyway, so happy belated blog anniversary to me and to Vanna. Um, so that was a fun little reminder. Um, I didn't quite realize it had been that long, but uh, I'm loving Vana's videos. Um, she is a very talented stitcher and finisher, and um, it's it's fun to see people that you have, you know, you've read their blog posts, you've seen their work, you know, so you kind of know their voice as far as, you know, uh, their writing, you know, from posts and things, but to actually see people in person and their mannerisms and, and everything, it's it's fun to see that, particularly somebody that I've been um, following for so long. So um, that's been really fun. And so kind of along those lines, so she, um, in one of her latest videos, uh, she talked about her thread storage. And so since I had a uh, thread, I thought I would, um, I would take a couple of seconds and show you my thread storage. So when I started to look at, you know, how I wanted to organize my thread, um, particularly my over dyed cottons and, um, and my silks, you know, I looked around at a lot of different options. And one of the things that I did look at was there's actually some, there's a system out there that I think you can can buy um, that is similar to what Vana came up with on her own. That is, you know, it's you put your your threads on these little you know things that snap into these you know long deals that slide down into basically a you know a file folder kind of contraption. Similar thought process. Um, probably way more expensive. <laughs> um, so Vana has the right idea. Um, I seriously, seriously looked at that, um, at something like that. And the reason that I did not go with something like that for my threads is really because of the way I use my threads. So, um, you know, you will notice that my threads for the most part, um, I have, and I showed you this and said they came this way from European cross stitch, but 
this is typically how I, you know, have my threads when I have them in my stitching bag is they are in bags, floss away bags, and they are on a ring. That keeps all my threads together. And here's the big kicker for me. This is the reason why I did not go with the other storage option is because as I'm using my threads, you know, if I finish off a, what I'm doing and I have, you know, half a length or a little bitty piece or whatever, you know, I conserve my thread. So, um, I like to be able to put that, you know, what's left of it in the bag. Or if I'm pulling one length off, you know, and have the rest of the strands, you know, from that length, um, or one ply off of that length, then I like to have the rest of them in here. So I don't like to have to kind of tie those back around the tag, you know, or what I know a lot of people do that. Um, I don't like to do that. I just find that that's annoying to me. Um, and I don't like my threads getting tangled up with each other. And that, you know, the downside of this is that you can't see your threads as easily, and, you know, and it's so pretty to take a picture and they're all, you know, nice and what have you, and you can see your threads. Um, but uh, this keeps them separated, it keeps them from not tangling. So this is typically how I keep my threads. And so because of that, um, what I ended up going with is, um, and the two people that, that I believe, um, you know, influenced me as far as going this direction are Tanya from uh, Scarlet House. And she used to have her thread storage like this. I don't believe she still does because I think she has them hanging, um, like on a system on the wall now, as opposed to the way that she used to have them. Um, and Nicole from Nicole's Needlework, um, who is also a friend of mine, um, she, I believe also at one point, I don't know if she still does, had her threads this way too. So this is what I ended up doing. So um, I wanted to be able to have my threads on a shelf um, so that they were all together and organized. That was really kind of my thought. And so I went and got, or Eric went and got <laughs> these photo boxes from Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Joann's or what have you, you know, and I just wanted plain black. And, um, you know, I think, I think Tanya may have had black. Uh, I think hers may have been black and I thought, oh, I really like how that looks. So I went with black, um, and they're just kind of a matte black you know, these are like a couple of bucks, whatever. And you can see I've just, you know, I use my label maker. I put a little label on there. I could have done a, please excuse us walking in front of the camera. I could have done a really, you know, pretty whatever, but label maker is my jam. So, um, and I have four of these boxes and probably if I had all of my threads out of those whips, bags I would need more boxes but as it is I only need four so I have my silks in here silks you can see that and so I just used the little dividers that came with it because these are for photo storage obviously I put my little labels on there to break them up and then I have everything in floss away bags and let me show you. So, here's what I did. Now, they give you this nice little place where you can write on here, but they're going in there like this. So, I put my label on this way. And this does take a little bit of time to do all the organization and get everything organized. Um, but, you know, initially, I was like, well, it, I've got my label in there. I don't, you know, 
I got the tag in there. I don't need to label that. But what I find is my thread is always on the side where the label, where the name is. So I just made them all the same, you know, printed that out and have them on there. And then I do have them in alphabetical order. So, you know, I've got them organized, as you can see, by manufacturer or type. And then um, from there, I've got them in alphabetical or like in the case of the NPIs that are numerical, I have them in number order. Um, and I do have, in some cases, like in the hand dyed fibers, the HDF, I do have some spools. Um, and these just kind of, I just kind of sift these down here on the side. I don't have many of them. I've got a couple um, of uh, a Verisois, uh spools. So that those just kind of sit down over on the side and I don't worry too much about it. Um, but, you know, this has worked beautifully for me. I can find everything easily. I can easily put things back. You know, I can see exactly where they go and um, they're not tangled. They're not, you know, getting all jacked up, whatever. So, and then you can see, I actually have two boxes for cotton. Um, excuse me. I have one box that is just gentle art sampler threads because I seem to have the most of those. Um, and so this one just says over dyed and I just know that's over dyed cotton. So let me just show you this. Um, so you can see I've got um, my weeks, I've got my crescent colors, which is now classic color works. Um, and then uh, back here I've got miscellaneous. And so typically like what I have back here in my miscellaneous are things like needle necessities, you know, that I only have a few of, or I've got some of this, like this whisper, um, specialty fibers. And I actually have a box that is probably going to end up being more of like the specialty fibers, like pearl cottons and whisper and my metallics and things like that. But for the most part, those are all in, uh, my Chatelaine whips. <laughs> so, uh, or kitted up, haven't been started. Um, so they're fine where they're at for now, but, um, so I've got two boxes for, uh, my over dyed cotton, and then I've got one box for silks and then one box that's for like specialty threads. Um, but this has worked so well for me. I'm really thrilled with how this has worked. Um, and it works, like I said, it, it works great for me. Um. Now the other piece of that is because I have so many things kitted up and in works in progress, what I found was if I went to um, kit up something new to start, if it wasn't in the box, I knew I probably had it, but where is it kind of thing? Or do I have it? Um, and so I, what I ended up doing is I do have an Excel spreadsheet that has all of my threads in it. And I have a little, you know, I've got the thread um, listed, thread name, and then uh, next to it, I if it's out of the box and it's in a project, I just put which project it's in. And so when I finish a project and I put all my threads back, I clear all of that out of my spreadsheet. So I know exactly where all my threads are, what project they're in. So if I have to borrow from Peter to pay Paul, I know exactly where to put it back <laughs> or, where it came from. Um, so anyway, that's what wor has worked for me. Um, and I know obviously your thread storage is kind of like, you know, how you stitch. It's what works for each individual per person. Um, but I thought it was so fun that Vonna showed, you know, kind of what she does um, that I thought I would show you what I do is, you know, is just an alternative. So anyway, um, thanks to Tanya and Nicole that's where I got the idea, um, and it has worked brilliantly for me. So thrilled with that. Um, anyway, so I wanted to share a, a little bit about my thread storage 
And uh, kind of in the midst of that, you know, I was uh, talking about some of the videos that I have watched um, lately. And so I, I wanted to give a shout out to Abby from Bella Stitch, who, you know, I've been watching her videos, uh, Vana Twisted Stitcher. And I will link all of these in my show notes, which I typically put on the blog. Um, so you can actually watch the video. You can go directly to YouTube if you subscribe to the channel there, or you can subscribe to my blog. Uh, there's a little spot up at the top where you can subscribe and so every time I have a new post whether it be a video post or uh, Just a regular post you'll get an email that tells you hey, she updated the blog um, so anyway uh, So you can subscribe either place, but that's where I put my show notes So I'll link all of these folks in in the show notes um, so Vana and then uh, and what was funny was while I was watching Vana's, uh, one of her videos, you know, over on the side, it shows you some other like this, you know, kind of thing. And I saw one that said Chatelaine kit unboxing. And so of course I had to go check that out. Um, and so uh, it, it was a, a video by Sarah Stitches and um, I had never seen her videos before. She's got four or five, um, and I watched several of them. And uh, I started with, of course, the last one first because that was the Shadowland unboxing, which was fun um, since I was already going to talk to you about mine, so that was timely. Uh, but she's got some fun videos too, so go and check her out. And then um, someone mentioned to me that you know they found my uh, my floss tube or my podcast from uh, a shout out that someone else had given to um, to me, which is um, Joe uh, from Joe's Stitchy Stuff uh, or Joe G. Um, and so uh, I went and, you know, had to watch Joe's video and, uh, and I thanked her profusely for the shout out. So thanks so much, Joe. Again, I really appreciate it. And um, I'm thankful to all the people that, you know, followed that link and came right over to, to see what I'm up to. So anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate that. And um, it, I will, you know, as I find some more, you know, folks to watch, I will certainly let you know who I'm watching and, and what I'm up to. Uh, those are just the ones that I've been watching uh, kind of in the last, you know, week or so. So. Anyway, um, so I wanted to share that. And then the only other thing, um, of course, at the end, I usually talk about what books I'm reading. Um, last time I, you know, was uh, kind of at the tail end of reading um, Beyond Desire by Thea Devine. Um, like I said, the story was fine. I wouldn't read it again, but it was fine. It kept my interest. You know, it took place mostly on the Orient Express, which was kind of fun. Um, but anyway, um, and then after that, I did read The Cuckoo's Calling um, by Robert Galbraith, which is also um, J.K. Rowling. And uh, a friend of mine had uh, recommended that book to me, and it was well worth it. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. So I will be reading more of those. Um, I had no doubt that I would enjoy it. Um, because of course I love the Harry Potter books, um, but you know, of course that's a, a much different genre, um, for Miss Rowling. So that was a, a really good book to read and I love mysteries anyway. So, um, that was good. And so then the, uh, the book that I picked up after that, um, I talked about a little bit last time is, uh, The Dark Days Club. This is by, uh, Allison Goodman and... This had been catching my eye over and over again at the library, and so I finally just had to check it out. And of course, I couldn't resist the, you know, the end papers because how fun is that? Anyway, so um, this is, I, I'm very much enjoying it. I'm not that far into it. I've not had a whole lot of time to read lately. I'm about 100 pages in, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. So, um, so far, highly recommend. Uh, it reminds me quite a bit of uh, Gail Carriger, I think, um, who wrote the Parasol Protectorate um, book, Soulless, I think was the first one. 
um, it reminds me quite a bit of that. It's not uh, as steampunky, um, you know, as that one is, but uh, the whole, you know, Victorian England, it's, um, it's good. So I'm enjoying that. It's um, making me feel a little less withdrawals from Penny Dreadful ending. So anyway, so that's what I've been reading. And um, I actually did have to renew this at the library because it was actually due back yesterday. So um, I just didn't get to it in time. So I had to renew it, but luckily I was able to do that so I can keep reading on it and get it finished. Um, and then we'll see what other fun things I can get from the library. So that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm at an hour. I can't even believe it. I was like, I'm just gonna tell you these other two little things and then be done. Yeah. Um, brevity is, you know, being brief is not my strong suit. Anyway, so um, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, if you will, you know, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. Um, if you're, you know, interested in subscribing, I love that. Um, comments in the blog are always welcome as well. Um, you can find the blog at cozyegg.cozyeggdesigns.com or you can just go directly to CozyEggDesigns.com and get to, you know, either of my blogs from there. Um, and you can find me on Instagram as Cozy Egg, Twitter, you know, what have you. I'm not really on Twitter that much, um, but Instagram for sure. And then, of course, you can find my videos on YouTube as Cozy Egg. So check out my channel. And um, if you're just now tuning in, I hope you go back and watch the previous videos um, cause there's some fun stuff in there too. So I do typically talk about, you know, stitching, knitting, quilting, whatever the heck I'm working on. So, um, but obviously you got lots of stitching this time. So, um, and my two, uh, you know, my two cats always, always like to help me record. So yeah, anyway. All right. Well, thanks guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And um, I will link to these other folks uh, who I've been watching so that you can go check them out and give them some love as well. And um, hopefully I will talk to you in another couple of weeks. Bye.